So we're now at section two, biblical foundations of church planting. So we want to look at the Bible. We want to see not only the examples, we want to gather some principles. And first of all, let's talk about church planting and the purpose of mission. Now sometimes we hear, well, mission is really about just sort of extending the kingdom. It's doing good for God. It's fighting poverty. It's helping people have better lives. It's helping make the world a more just world. And that's true to a large extent. That is true. I believe that where lives are changed, those kinds of things happen. And that's pleasing to God. And that's the heart of God. He desires to see that happen. But I also believe that church planning is a key to seeing that happen. As we just saw in our previous point, church planning can be a key to social change. So let's talk about what is sometimes called the Missio Dei and the mission of the church. Now, in a course on theology of mission, we would talk a lot about what's called Missio Dei, which is just the Latin word for uh, the mission of God. Of course, it sounds much more profound when you use Latin, so we theologians like to use, use Latin when we can, but it basically just means the mission of God, Missio Dei. And without going into a lot of detail, it was around the 1950s, 1952. This was after the Second World War, and uh, supposedly Christian nations had been slaughtering each other. The land of the Reformation was the land of the Holocaust. Terrible, terrible things that Christians, supposedly Christians, had done. And people were saying, how can Christians go into the world and preach the gospel when we have had such terrible things that we Christians have supposedly done? At the same time, there was the takeover of, uh, of China by the communist government. Eventually, uh, the missionaries were, were removed from the country. Of course, throughout much of the world, communism began to spread. The world's largest mission field, China, was now closed to mission work. The churches were becoming persecuted. Is God really in control? How can we do mission? And it was in that atmosphere in the 1950s that at a missions conference, this idea of Wait a minute. Missions is not just something people do. It's not just a human undertaking. It's not just obedience to some command. Missions is God's own mission. God is a missionary God. And God is the one who will move that mission forward. And we have the privilege of participating with God and what He is doing in the world. And so... This concept of Missio Dei was developed. And the church, the mission of the church, is really an extension of God's own mission. So the very self-understanding of what the church is about is that the church is God's missionary people. David Bosch, in a classic work on theology of mission called Transforming Mission, he states it this way. He says, mission has its origin in the heart of God. God is a fountain of sending love. And this is the deepest source of mission. It's impossible to penetrate deeper still. There is mission because God loves people. And so the mission of the church is an outgrowth, an expression of God's love for people. And the church needs to be in alignment with God's purposes. Now, how does church planting fit into the larger sense of God's mission in the world and what God wants to do? Well, the church is central to God's mission in the world. God has always chosen to work primarily through a people. Now, of course, he's performed mission, uh, uh, miracles. He has... Uh, used human governments to, to be his servant. But generally, God has always chosen to work through his chosen people. In the Old Testament, Israel. And in the New Testament, the church. And so the church is central to God's work in the world. The church is God's primary vehicle, God's agent in the world to be his representatives. And so... As one theologian, Leslie Newbegin, put it, the church is a sign, an instrument, and a foretaste of the kingdom of God. 
This is a way of looking at the nature, the character of the church. Remember I spoke about church planting as planting kingdom communities. And this is what we mean. God's kingdom, what is God's kingdom? God's kingdom is where God rules, where God reigns, where Jesus is Lord. That's where the kingdom of God is. And the church should be a sign of the kingdom. The church points to that kingdom like a road sign that says this is the way to the kingdom. The church is an instrument. In other words, it's God's tool, God's vehicle for, for his kingdom, his, spreading his rule in the world over people's lives, over families, over communities. And the church is a foretaste of the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Well, many times if you go, say, to a large supermarket, and they'll have maybe the cheese stand there, and they'll have little free, free samples, tastes of the cheese, you know? A little piece and a little toothpick, and you, you, you take a little bite of that. You go, hmm, that's really good. I'm going to buy some of that cheese, right? Or maybe it's a little sample of the juice. You taste, ah, oh, that juice is really good. I'm going to buy that juice. That's the foretaste. And you see, the church should be like that foretaste of the kingdom of God. People look at the church and they say, that's what it looks like when people live under God's rule. That's what it looks like when people are reconciled to one another and to the Creator. That's what it looks like where Jesus is Lord and he makes things new, where he forgives sin. We should be that foretaste, that people. And you can't do that alone. As a community, we can manifest what that rule of God looks like in a way that you as an individual Christian can't do. And so the church is that foretaste, that instrument, that sign of the kingdom. And we have that influence around us, that salt and light influence where the rule of God is present. And, and because we are working as salt and light in our communities, God's kingdom is manifest, becomes visible among his people. So the church is central to God's mission in the world. Well, if that's the case, then church planting has to be central because where there's no church, there's no kingdom community. Where there's no church, there's no sign, instrument, and foretaste of the kingdom. And so we need to plant the church there as a kingdom community where there is not a church or where there are not enough churches. And so the task of missions what we as humans do in participating with God and his mission must include the planting of churches. And so I define the task of missions in this way. The creation and expansion of kingdom communities among all the peoples of the earth to the glory of God. These communities need to be created, and they need to grow, and they need to be kingdom communities. See, sometimes, again, we're just thinking of church as an institution. They're people who come together on Sunday in a building and then go back to their homes. We need to be kingdom communities showing what it's like where people live under the rule of God, where Jesus is Lord. But those communities... I mean, not just where I live. God intends for all the peoples of the earth, all the different ethnic groups, the language groups, every people, nation, tribe, and tongue should have among them a kingdom community showing them the way to live with God. And so the chief means of creating these communities is evangelism, discipleship, leading to the planting and growth and reproduction, multiplication of churches that show the rule of God, the reign of God in word and in deed. 
So we preach the word. It's the way to be reconciled with God. You can't enter the kingdom. Remember what said, what Jesus said in John chapter 3? He was asked, what do I need to do to enter the kingdom? And Jesus said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom. So the word leads people into the rule of God by leading them to Jesus. And then we live that kingdom value out indeed. We think of the third Sermon on the Mount that tells us the character of the way we live out the Lordship of Christ. And so we need to create these communities by evangelism and discipleship of communities that live out God's kingdom values in word and in deed. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. I like to speak of three-dimensional kingdom communities. Kingdom communities need three dimensions to be real kingdom communities. Now, one is what we call doxology, which is basically the word for worship. That's our great calling. We are going to spend all eternity worshiping God. And we need to start now. To live under the Lordship of Christ is to be worshipers and lovers of God. What was the greatest commandment? Jesus was asked, what's the great commandment? He said, to love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. And the second is love your neighbor as yourself. Every church has to be a lover, a worshiper of God, not just something you do on Sunday morning, but your whole lives, as Romans says, is an offering, an acceptable offering of worship to God. But evangelism and discipleship is the Great Commission. We need to be preaching the gospel. We need to be leading people to Christ. We need to be teaching them how to, as it says in the Great Commission, to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them to obey all that Christ has commanded. And then the third dimension is compassion and social transformation, where we live out those values. We show people visibly what it means that God loves us. We don't just talk about it. We become a community of love, community that shares that love with others in works of compassion, and changing our communities. That's the great commandment, to love our neighbor as ourselves. How can we preach about the love of God if we're not willing to manifest and show that love? And Jesus said, how can you say you love God who you've not seen if you don't love your neighbor who you can see? So these are the three dimensions. And a cube cannot exist with just two dimensions. You can't just say, well, my church is good at two of these, but not the other one. If it's going to be a kingdom community, it needs all three dimensions. Now, this is the kind of church we want to plant because that's what God's kingdom is about. That's what the Missio Dei is about. And that needs to happen among all peoples. And so you might say, well, that's hard enough work just to have a church that's really living out a kingdom community. That, that, I mean, that's a challenge enough, right? And that, that church living is salt and light in its, its own neighborhood. But that's not the end of our mission. Our mission is to create and expand those communities among all the peoples of the earth. Now that might just start with, with people in our city that still don't know him. But it probably means also going to other places. It means sending out people to unreached people groups in other parts of the world. And those then become kingdom communities that continue to be a sign, a foretaste, an instrument of the kingdom wherever they are. And that is God's mission in the world, to see that kind of transformation happening. And it happens through local churches and people living under the Lordship of Christ in those local churches. So that's how I see church planning as being so central to God's mission in the world. Church planning is not just something for a few special people that kind of have an evangelistic uh, gift. It's for the mission of the whole church to be involved in this.